What's up everyone? Today we're going to be talking about FizzBuzz. Specifically, we're going to solve the FizzBuzz problem in SQL Server two different ways. The first way is using a single recursive CTE and the second way is using the multiple oh. recursive member CTE. Which, if you don't know what that is, I didn't either until like a week ago, so just keep watching and you'll find out. So the FizzBuzz problem goes like this. Imagine you need to write the numbers 1 through 100 on a list and for every number that's a multiple of 3 you're going to write the word fizz and for every number that's a multiple of 5 you're going to write the word buzz. Uh, ones, numbers that are both multiples of 3 and 5 uh, you're going to write the word fizz buzz. So the result should look like this. This is a very common programming problem used in interviews a lot to weed out applicants that have no idea how to code. And while SQL isn't maybe the best language to solve this problem with, since this is a SQL channel, we might as well solve it with that. So let's start with the basic recursive CTE solution. So a basic recursive program in SQL Server may look like this. We have a result, say the number one, and then we run some code that says previous result plus one, which would give us two. We then run that code, previous result plus one again, and our next output is three. We can keep going all the way, you know, to say, let's say number 99, and then finally 100 until we hit a condition that's, that we wrote saying previous result is less than 100. So how do we do this in SQL Server? Let's cut to my desk. First, we have to create a common table expression or a CTE. I'm gonna call mine C. Next, we write our anchor member or the initial result. In this case, it's just a select one as row number. After that, we write our recursive member. This is the code that will run on the previous results of each iteration. For the first iteration, it runs on the anchor case above. So here we just write C dot row number plus one. The C is the syntax we use to refer to either the anchor member for the first iteration or the results of each previous iteration. We close our CTE and write a select statement for it. We include the condition where row number is less than 100 because we don't want this to run forever. And like that, we have our list of numbers. Turning the sample into a solution for FizzBuzz is pretty simple then. For each row, we just check whether the row number is a factor of 3 or 5 or both and output the correct word. I'm going to change our anchor member to start at 0 and add a new column that includes FizzBuzz as the result because 0 is divisible by both 3 and 5. Our recursive member needs to match in the number of columns and their data types, so we add a case statement here. Let me paste that in. All this case statement does is use the modulo operator to determine if the current row number is divisible by 3, 5, or 15, the smallest number that's divisible by both. Depending on which statement it matches, we output either fizz, buzz, or fizzbuzz. We'll also update our final select to add our fizz or buzz column and order the data nicely. With that, we have our fizzbuzz problem solved. Now I mentioned at the start of this video that we're going to solve this problem with a multiple recursive member CTE as well. Multiple recursive members is actually how I got the idea for this video in the first place. See, last week I needed to write a plain old recursive CTE, and since I only have to use them once or twice a year, I was in the SQL Server documentation looking up the syntax. While reading the documentation though, I noticed a detail I never saw before. Multiple anchor members and recursive members can be defined. Multiple recursive members? What? I searched online, but I didn't find much information about how these work. So I figured why not try to apply multiple recursive member CTEs to the FizzBuzz problem to get a better understanding of how they work. So here's my solution for how I solve the problem using a multiple recursive member CTE. We keep the anchor member the same, but we add a new recursive member. This new recursive member is simply going to include all of the rows that are not divisible by 3 or 5. So the numbers 1, 2, 4, 6, etc. We then add our second recursive member, which will produce rows only that are divisible by three. And then we add yet a third recursive member that produces rows that are divisible by five. If we run our final select, you'll notice the code is mostly working, but we have duplicates of rows that are multiples of both three and five. Not only that, they're mislabeled. They're missing the word fizzbuzz. So I add a string aggregate function to our final select to concatenate any rows with duplicate row numbers. If we run our final select again, you'll see our problem is solved. Now, is this a practical solution? <laughs> no way. 
Uh, multiple recursive member CTEs, I think, are a terrible way of solving FizzBuzz, at least the way I wrote them. Uh, the single recursive method is definitely way better. Uh, but I think this was a good exercise in learning how these multiple recursive member CTEs work, which is why I did it. I did find one article online by Itzig Ben-Gan, of course, who else, right, who writes about these multiple recursive member CTEs and tries to find practical problems to use them for. Uh, he did have a good one of solving family trees. It did see like using the multiple recursive CTE was an easier you know, form of coding rather than the single recursive CTE. So I've linked to that article below. He does a really great job of explaining that using Lord of the Rings. Um, but besides that, I had a hard time thinking of real world examples of when you would actually use this. But I still think it's good to know about this, even if I can't think of practical use cases for it right now. Who knows if in the future I may encounter a problem and I may be able to say, hey, this is a perfect use case for multiple recursive member CTEs. So if you've ever used these multiple recursive member CTEs for anything, you know, comment below. I'd love to hear how you've used these. So thanks for joining me for this week's episode. If you haven't subscribed already, press that red subscribe button below. Or if you're watching this on a computer or the YouTube app, there should be a button that magically appears here in a second. All right, I'll see you guys.